Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about job search skills, how you find 75% of the jobs that aren't advertised, and how you get in before the crowd. Because if you can get in before the crowd, then you have a much, much, much higher chance of actually getting that job. So stick around. We'll be right back with that information. <laughs> Hi there Smart Drivers, welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test tonight talking to you about job search skills and I can tell you stories about uh, looking for jobs myself and selling my own business and products and services and, know, and tell you that this is a skill that you need to have and need to be able to do well uh, to succeed in life. And there are lots of people here tonight already. Uh, Farah's here, good guys here. Uh, Edgar, Moki, Anita, Singh is here. Colin is here. Colin, uh, are you using a different email address because I signed you up under the email that you sent me, uh, which is a Gmail account, and if I signed you up under a different email account, that's probably the reason that you're uh, not showing up as a moderator here. So Colin is also working as a moderator, but I'm not sure why it's working here. So just let me know that, Colin. And Jaden is here from Florida. And Fair is here, so lots of people here already. Bricks for Wheels is here. Corey, he's the one in blue. Uh, he is the moderator tonight and used really good at getting the videos up and suggestions for you. Uh, good guy passed my driver's test because of you. Thank you so much for that. Good guy, congratulations on that. That's really awesome. And if you can head over to the Smart Drive Test website and sign up for the 100K campaign, that will really help us out too. And we have been tardy on the 100K campaign. We have not yet made the draw for the $100 uh, fuel card, but we're going to get caught up on that. Uh, a few other things going on here, actually a lot of other things going on here, and I'll, we'll talk a little bit more of that about in questions and answers tonight. Sebastian's here, Jonathan's here. Uh, Jonathan had just passed my CDL road test this past Thursday, and I'll be getting my CDL at the DMV tomorrow. What advice would you give me once I get my CDL? Thanks, great channel. Thank you so much, Jonathan. And you are definitely in the right place for looking for a job tonight, Jonathan, because I'll give you lots of skills that will help you out with that. Uh, Farah, thank you so much. Uh, Tim is here with DriveSmart BC and awesome resources over at Smart uh, DriveSmart BC, sorry about that, uh, uh, for driving and all kinds of information. It's just an awesome resource here in the province of British Columbia. Tim is doing a great job. Uh, Yes, and exactly what Tim just said there at DriveSmart BC is to have a clean driving record. If you have a couple of speeding tickets, you're probably going to be all right if you're looking for a job as a driving professional, but for the most part, you want to have a driving abstract. You certainly don't want DUIs or negligent driving or those types of things. So, uh, Rolly is here. Uh, automatic CDL driver. Rolly, you're going to have a tough time with that. Uh, maybe some of the bigger companies in the U.S. that will work out for you. Uh, Jimmy, I just passed my CDL on Friday. That is awesome, Jimmy. That's really great. Uh, Tim, you are most welcome. Anything we can do to help each other out here on the big old world of the internet. And uh, Colin, uh, for my Gmail, which doesn't have my YouTube channel. Okay, so probably, Colin, what you're going to have to do is sign up for a YouTube uh, channel, and that'll probably let you be a moderator here. Uh, Indiana. Moki, you're in Indiana. If you want to get a hold of me, uh, my email is rick at smartdrivetest.com and we can take care of all of that in the discussion here. I don't want to spend too much time here with the prologue, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to go through that and then we'll come back and I will answer all your questions that you have. Uh, anything to do with licensing, anything to do with getting a job, particularly for those of you who have recently passed your CDL and are looking to get a job as a CDL. Certainly all of these skills are applicable uh, that I'm going to talk about in terms of finding a job. And one of the things I'm going to say to you, me personally, as you know, I'm well educated. I went, I've got a doctorate. And uh, three of the most important courses I took in my life were typing. <laughs> we now call it keyboarding. The second one I took was how to find a job, and the third one was anger management in the family because, I mean, we all, you know, we're guys. We have issues with anger, and things in life frustrate us. So those were the three most important courses that I've taken in my life. Finding a job was one of the most important skills that I learned. So I'm going to pass some of these skills and abilities on to you, and I'm going to show you how these can work for you. Uh, Jonathan, I also 
uh, plan also to get my endorsements. I already have my passenger and school bus endorsements. I also have uh, no air brake restrictions. I plan on getting the remaining endorsements for the Class B. Yes, that is a good idea. The more tickets, the more certifications, the more endorsements you can get, Jonathan, the easier it's going to be in the beginning for you to get a job, okay? Uh, okay, so probably that's what it is, Colin. I need to sign you up under the Gmail account that you're currently using here as Travel and Gaming. And that way that'll let you be a moderator. Okay, so I'm just going to flip over to the PowerPoint presentation. We'll come back. We'll do more questions and answers. And I'll just get through the PowerPoint presentation here. And we'll do that. All right, so tonight we're talking about getting a job. We're talking about the skills that will let you get in to do, to get ahead of the rest of the group. And I'll tell you that these, from my personal experience, these skills do in fact work and they will help you to get a job. So if you're new to Smart Drive Test, Smart Drive Test helps new drivers get a license, veteran drivers to remain crash free, and CDL drivers to start a career as a truck or bus driver. And this is a picture of me in 2002 when I was driving coach for Greyhound. Most of the 1990s I was a truck driver uh, in Eastern Canada, in Ontario, hauling freight up and down the Eastern seaboard, everything east of the Mississippi, and I did LTL into New York and whatnot, so, you know, LTL stands for less than load, which means that there's 10 or 12 drops on a trailer. 1997, I became a licensed commercial driving instructor with an expertise in air brakes, and I have been, still am an, air, uh, an instructor with an expertise in air brakes, and tomorrow, come heck or high water, I am going to get my air brake book up and it will be for sale over on the website and I'll post around on the social media to let everybody know that the, in fact the air brake book is up and ready for you to purchase. Uh, 2006, I earned my doctorate from the University of Melbourne uh, in legal history. For those of you who don't know, legal history is the study of policing, courts and prisons and my expertise is in policing as it relates to uh, traffic <laughs> and policing so and while I was at university I drove for Greyhound in Australia and also one of the regional lines there for V-Line so I've got a lot of experience in driving and teaching driving and, and traffic safety so uh, be sure to look down in the description for those of you who are going and working towards your first uh, road test even if it's a CDL license this this checklist will help you head over to the smart drive test website and pick up your free checklist over there and this checklist will give you a schedule of things that you need to do in order to be successful on your road test, what you need to do, slow speed maneuvers you need to practice, and what you need to do on test day so that you're going to be successful getting your, uh, going to your road test and passing your road test first time. So look down in the description there and get the link for that. All right, so what do you need to do to find a job? Uh, if you're looking for a job in everything, you're going to get a job. You won't get, a, you won't get anything. Okay, and what I mean by that is that when you call employers or you talk to employers or you talk to your friends, you can't say, listen, I just want a job. I don't care what it is. You know, I don't care whether I'm stocking shelves at the Safeway, the supermarket or whatever, right? You can't do that. You need to know what you're going to get a job in. And I just put these two examples up here. If you're going to be a job and a truck driver, I'm, I want to drive truck locally. So I want to work in my hometown of Vernon. I want to drive truck and be a long haul truck driver running up and down the east coast of the United States. I want to be a regional truck driver. I want to run between Vancouver and Calgary. I want to run between uh, Ontario and Indiana. So you need to be very specific about what you're going to do. If you're going to get a job as a florist, you say I want to work in such and such a town and I want to arrange roses for example. So you need to be very specific about what you want to do when you start looking for work. If you don't know what you want to do or you want to change careers, you need to think about that as well. And this is one of the books that if you go to any uh, career workshop, <coughs> excuse me, what is the color of your parachute? What color is your parachute rather? This is the book. This is the book that I used when I took my course. It was a six week cor course on how to find a job. And you put all your information in, all of your likes and dislikes, and you figure out what kind of a career you want, what kind of a job you want. Uh, and this may not be for some of you. Some of you may just be looking for part-time work, or you may be just looking for something intermittently that's gonna fill the gap between now and the next job. But if you're really truly looking for your career and you're looking for the job that you really want, what you want to do for the rest of your life, this is the book to go through and work through and do and do the work to figure out what you want to do for the rest of your life. 
Now you want to do some research in terms of the work that you want to do. You want to look on the internet. You want to find people who are actually working in that profession. You want to talk to them, get some information. And if you can't find people in the profession in which you want to work, go and do informational interviews. Call up the company, talk to the people in charge, the people who do the hiring, say, listen, can I have a half an hour of your time? And go in and ask them questions. What kind of work is it? What are the work hours? What, what am I expected to do? What am I expected to pr produce? You know, do I work on an assembly line? Do I drive cars back and forth between point A and point B? Do I write reports? Whatever it is that you're going to be doing, figure out what you want to do and do the work to figure out what kind of a career, what kind of a job you actually want. And so then you need to figure out, okay, where am I at? How do I get to where I want to have my, gene, my dream job? Do you have to go back to school? Do you have to go to a vocational school? For example, if you want to be a truck driver, you have to go to truck driving school. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. A few years ago, I was thinking about going back to teach college to become a teacher at the, at the, in the public school system. I would have had to gone back to university and I would have had to gone to teacher's college and I needed to take some courses to upgrade because I didn't have exactly the courses I needed to be in, uh, accepted into teacher's college. So I needed to think all of that. You need to think about certifications. And this was the question that Jonathan was just asking me uh, about, you know, endorsements, passenger endorsements, tanker endorsements, other endorsements for driving truck. It was the same thing years ago when I got my driving instructor's license and I was working towards getting my first job as a driving instructor. I needed to go back to, to, to vocational school and I needed to get my in-car practical and my in-car theory courses in order to buoy my, my resume, make my resume more attractive to employers so I had to go back and get some more certifications. Do you need to do an internship? If you're gonna go and be a medical doctor, for example, after you finish going to school, you're gonna to have to do an internship for three or four years. You're gonna to have to work in a hospital. If you wanna do a specialty, you need to do another internship. Do you need to do some on, job, on the job experience? If you wanna work as a plumber, you wanna work as an electrician, any of the tradespeople, you're going to need to do on the job training in order to qualify to become a journeyman in that trade. So when you're looking for a job, you're essentially selling your greatest asset. Your greatest asset is you, and you need to be excited about who you are. You, and sometimes that's really tough because as we know, finding a job can be a full-time job, and unfortunately there are periods of time that it really feels like work, especially after a few months if you're still slogging, you're still beat, pounding the pavement, you haven't been successful, you haven't found a job, it really feels like work because you're not getting ahead, you're not getting a job, you're not getting anybody that's that is really interested in what you have to offer. So, uh, and obviously I put the wrong things here <laughs> in the thing here. Uh, just disregard that, please. Me in a hurry. Uh, so you're selling your greatest asset. You have to sell yourself and you have to be enthusiastic because if you're not enthusiastic about what you're selling, an employer certainly isn't going to be enthusiastic. So where do you find the jobs? Where are the jobs? Online. Obviously, you're going to do online research. You're going to join all of these employment uh, internet sites. Uh, you're going to look on one of them here in Canada is Kijiji. Kijiji is a really good one for finding employment. Uh, company websites, all of these companies that you will probably be looking for and making a list of people that you're going to be contacting, they're all going to have their openings, their employment openings on their website. You're going to network. When you're looking for work, talk to everybody. Think about getting some business cards uh, made up. Think of getting a, a mini resume made up that you can hand to people and say, listen, I'm looking for a job as a florist. I'm looking for a job as a teller at Walmart. I'm looking for a job as a, a legal assistant. Give them the mini resume. It's got your contact de details on it. And they may not know somebody, but they may know somebody who knows somebody else. And that's what you want to do in terms of networking. You want a cold call. This is the most important thing. You want to make a list of the companies that you want to work for and you need to figure out who the people are in positions of power. You need to get in touch with those people and you need to cold call. And as uh, the character says here, this telephone won't dial itself. You need to get on the phone and you need to talk to people. And this is really tough, but it's the most effective way of getting a job, getting leads and talking to people and being successful in getting the job that you want. 
Now, one of the things that you're going to need to do is if you want to get into a company and you need to get to the person who's going to do to the hiring, sometimes you need to get past the gatekeeper, the secretary, the receptionist. You need to get past these people and you're going to need to ring before eight o'clock in the morning or after five o'clock at night. That's how you're going to get through to the person. So, for example, I was talking some months, a couple of months ago about getting a job as a transit driver. Uh, if you want to get a job as a transit driver, you need to talk to the operations manager. You don't, you don't want to talk to HR. You want to talk to the operations manager. And that operations manager is guarded by HR. They're guarded by reception. So you need to figure out how to get in touch with them. Now, the other thing about cold calling, make sure that you rehearse before you get on the phone with these people. Because as soon as you get on the phone, you're going to call them up. You're going to say, hey, my name is Rick August. I'm looking for work as a bus driver. There's going to be a dead silence on the phone. <laughs> as soon as you say that. Now, don't let the silence hang. Say to them, listen, could I have a couple minutes of your time to sort of talk to you about what I have to offer and ask you if you have any positions available. They're obviously gonna say yes. And you're gonna need to lead into your spiel. You're gonna have to have your spiel ready. You're gonna have to have it practiced. You're gonna have to say, listen, I just finished truck driving school. Uh, I, I worked on buses. I did in-class theory on customer service on log books, uh, how to do pre-trip inspections and uh, how to you know, do some minor repairs and those types of things. I have background in customer service. I worked in restaurants as a server or whatnot. So you have to have your spiel ready. When you're all done, there's going to be more silence and you say, you ask the person, do you have any positions available? And they're either going to say yes or no. And if they say no, you say, do you have any positions coming up? They're going to say no. Okay. At that point, do not hang up the phone. You're not finished yet <laughs> because the person that you're talking to on the phone is your greatest resource. All of these people know all of the other people in the bus driving industries in and around the area where you live and work. So you need to say to them, do you know any other company or any other person that might be hiring truck drivers or bus drivers? And the person will say yes or no. And you can say, listen, is there somebody that I might get in contact that could help me out? And they'll give you a name. They're their greatest resource. So don't just hang up. Ask them. Tap into their, uh, their network. Okay. And then at the end, after you're all done and they said, no, we don't have a job right now. It's like, can I call you back in a month? Because in a month, people quit, people die, uh, people get promoted. Things happen within the company. So don't give up. So make sure that you keep track of the people that you call, the people that you talk to, the exact spelling of their name, the contact details, and set yourself a reminder to call them back in a month. Because I'll tell you a story about that. I was after this truck driving company to work as a safety officer uh, while I was doing job search. I called them three, four, five months in a row. I called them back. I called them back looking for, to be a safety officer. I didn't call them back on month six. On month seven, in the paper appears the exact job with the exact company <laughs> that I had been calling for five months. All right. Now, know that when you call these people back, when you send them emails, when you send them resumes, people are busy. Anybody who's tried to contact me <laughs> knows that it takes me a couple of days to get back to you with an email, and sometimes I need a reminder. Uh, most of us in this day and age, we have an email box where we're getting 100 emails a day. It's not that we're ignoring you. It's that we are incredibly busy. And remember, if you are cold calling employers, if you are cold calling these people who are responsible for hiring other people, you are doing them a favor. Because this is the pile that you go into once they put an ad on the internet, once they put an ad in the paper, this is what they're up against. They got 300 resumes on their desk. So if you can get in before the pile, you are going to be way, way, way ahead of the group. All right, so resumes, cover letters, thank you notes. If you don't have a resume, you don't have an updated resume, make sure that you hire a professional, somebody that can do that for you, and make sure that you have a one-page resume. If you have more than one page, it's probably not gonna get read. Unless you're a professional, unless you're a lawyer or a doctor, or you are, a university professor you want to try and keep your resume to one page and I can tell you right now this resume here you can save a lot of space by taking your address and contact details and putting them on one line underneath your name here okay application if there is an application with a job for which you're applying take it home fill it out meticulously so everything's filled out don't you know try and uh, do the best you can fill it out completely make sure it's legible and then take it back and submit it with your resume and your cover letter. Do not ever submit an application or a 
a, a resume without a cover letter. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. If you can get reference letters, make sure you have those. And if they do ask you for references, make sure that you contact your references, make sure that you send them a copy of your resume and make sure that they know that they may get called by employers, all right? And then finally, send a thank you note, an email uh, in the letter, in the mail, snail mail. Uh, make sure that you send them a thank you. I have gotten interviews at companies because I sent a thank you, all right? And then follow up. <laughs> This is Tatamount. I'm just going to revisit this point about what I was talking about. If you do uh, contact somebody and you cold call them and you say, listen, going to call you back in a month. And I already told you the story that I did that and I didn't follow up on month six and month seven, the job appeared in the paper. So make sure that you follow up, make sure that you're polite. And again, ask them the same questions when you follow up. Do you know anybody else who might be hiring at this point? Do you know anybody else that I might get in touch with? Do you know anybody that could help me? because they will help you. People will always help you get a job. They're trying to do the best that they can for you, okay? All right, now if you submit your application and you get an interview process, you do have the right to ask them questions when they contact you. Don't just say, okay, I'll be there on that date. Ask them some questions. What kind of interview are you going to be into and how many interviewers are going to be? Is there going to be a panel or is there going to be one person? Let me tell you from my personal experience, when it's three or four people who are interviewing you, it can be pretty daunting if you don't know who they are. And as well, try and get their names and their positions and do research before you actually show up for the interview. Ask them if you should bring anything to the interview. Should you bring a criminal search? Should you bring a driver's abstract? Should you bring other paperwork that you might need? When you're finished the interview, is there going to be a second interview? Ask them how long... Uh, before they're going to contact you after the interview. If they don't contact you, contact them back. Most cases, unfortunately, it's gonna be that you didn't get the job and they didn't contact you, but if they didn't, they might've just got busy, it didn't get done, contact them and say, listen, whatever, okay? And then if you didn't get the job and you were unsuccessful, you can ask for a debrief, but unfortunately, in my experience, debriefs are basically, they're just giving you a spiel about why they didn't hire you. And the reason you didn't get hired is because there was a better candidate. That's all there is to it. So I don't know if there's a lot of value in debriefing. Okay, so that's essentially a high overview of finding a job. And uh, we can certainly answer some more questions about this, about how to get a job as a truck driver. We can certainly talk about those specifics and those types of things. But cold calling, 75% of jobs are not advertised. And if you can network and cold call, you're going to be much more successful in getting a job and we can help you with all of that, all right? And on the thumbnail here, uh, the reason that Bill Walker is on there, the reason that I keep bringing up Bill Walker because he was <laughs> my star pupil and Bill was successful. He finished truck driving school on Thursday and on Tuesday he was working in the oil field driving trucks. So it, it can happen, it can work with networking and uh, cold calling and getting a job and that's what basically what Bill did. All right, so we'll get through some questions here. All right, uh, ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Ryan's here, Odie's here. Uh, car insurance, how to select coverage, what are unnecessary, what are the things to consider least and most important? Odie, for, that's a good topic for car insurance and actually, you know, uh, Odie, I'm gonna write that down somewhere if I can find a pen, which I can't find a pen, but I'm gonna write that down and I'm gonna do a presentation on that because that is an awesome question. Odie, mo first and foremost, it depends on the age of your car. If you have a car over five or 10 years old, it's you probably just want pay basic insurance on your vehicle, public liability and, and, and public damage, property damage. PL and PD, that's all you want on your insurance. You don't need theft, you don't need fire, you don't need collision because it just isn't worth it. The premiums are too high for you to be able to do that. Uh, if you do have a newer car, then you definitely want fire, you definitely want theft, and you definitely want collision. Now know that collision on your vehicle is expensive. It's probably, it will double the, your premium. So if your premium is $1,000 a year, it's gonna double to $2,000 a year by the time you put uh, collision on your vehicle. So know that, that it's going to be expensive. Okay. Epic, uh, CDL driver carrying dangerous goods. Should I stop at railroad crossings or not? Last week I was driving behind a heating oil truck and didn't stop at railway crossings, but went straight through avoid red signal. 
Uh, Epic, it depends what you're carrying. I think the only dangerous good that you have to carry and have to stop at railway crossings is explosives. I think that's the only one that you have to do that. All right. Uh, Faruko, I got my class one six months ago and now work in Alberta oil patch as a truck driver. Yes, so you definitely were successful in doing that. Okay. Uh, Ryan is here. Andrew, on our way to a baseball game, our bus driver hit a deer and she was going 80 and a 55 and she got fired. Uh, that's, that's really fast, Andrew. That's really fast. Anita, how's it going? Uh, Andrew Kijiji is a website that is owned by, uh, eBay, eBay. Yes. It's owned by eBay and they do advertising. It's a, it's like a local list. They sell stuff there, but also there are a lot of jobs on Kijiji that are, uh, advertised there. And, um, Corey, I'll put the link up for you. It's www.kijiji.com. Okay. Jake, uh, when you create resume, make sure you say stuff positive about yourself, not negative. And yes, that is an excellent point, Jake. And the other thing you want to do on a resume is you want to have action verbs. Okay. Completed project A, uh, you know, work well within a group or alone. Okay. So those types of things. So that's an excellent point. I, uh, Yes, and that's good. You don't want to have any errors on your resume, Jake. That is an excellent point. Uh, when you get a W while well, truck driving, uh, Andrew, if you get a DWI, D, DWI drinking while under the in, or driving while under the influence, you're going to be fired. I, uh, there's just no way around that. You're going to be fired. It's very unlikely that you're going to keep your job. Uh, Guy, uh, many bigger limousine companies need P passenger endorsement. They pay like $35, $35 an hour plus tips. Yes, there's an excellent point. There's a place that you can find a job. Andrew, we love you, Rick. You are the reason I am a good driver. I owe everything to you. Thank you so much, Andrew. That is a lovely, lovely compliment. I just, that just really, <laughs> really helps me get going when I'm doing. And I do not see my friend Hall Phase. I didn't get a video up last week. I did shoot a video and I promise that I'm going to get videos up this week. I'm not going to promise, but I will get videos up this week. I'm just going to do this. So uh, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> I just, I really need to get back doing this and I'm going to work on that really hard. Okay. It's Christmas here. You see, I have it in the back here. <laughs> We've switched seasons here. All right. So there we go. There's Kijiji. Uh, Troy Dan. No, don't know him. Colin, I sent you an email with this current YouTube channel name. If you could sign me on, that would be great. I will, Colin. I will do it as soon as I get off after this. If I don't get it done tomorrow, send me a reminder email, okay? Uh, Jake, if you have a criminal record or bad driving record, get a new ID. It's not worth sailing. No, that didn't make any sense. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jake, you can't get a new ID. That just doesn't work that way. All right. All right. So uh, I'll, I'll tell you another story about getting a job. So I said to you at the beginning in the prologue there that I had three courses in my life that I took that, that were instrumental in changing the way that I looked at life and the, and the skills that I have that be, allow me to do what I do. So for example, I took typing when I was in high school and never thought that I would spend all day on a computer working on typing. So that's one of them. And the other one was job search skills. When I was in this course, it was a six week course. You had to show up every day at eight o'clock in the morning. You had to stay till four in the afternoon. Part of working there was doing your resume, doing your cover letters, was cold calling, doing networking. So they actually had phones in the center, the employment center in London, Ontario, where I lived at the time. And you had to spend a couple of hours a day actually doing uh, cold calling. And so I got on the phone and did cold calling. And I finally got around to calling London Transit, the one place that I never ever thought in my life that I would actually work at and called him up said listen I'm a driving instructor I'm working for work I'm looking for work as a either driving training drivers or working as a safety officer because that's the other work that driving instructors can do they can work in large companies and work as safety officers and so I talked to the operations man operational manager and he said yeah we might have something to do uh, might have something for you to do right now. Uh, this was in the late 1990s. This was just at the point where most transit authorities 
in Ontario were switching over to low floor buses to allow people with disabilities to ride buses, especially people in wheelchairs and other mobility uh, aids and those types of things. So I said, okay, can I come down and drop off my resume? And I said, yes. And this is the other skill that you need to have when you're going to look for jobs. So I got my resume together, got my uh, suit to get, or got my cover letter together, took it down. Uh, Bob was his name. I went into the office and I was, of course, I'm in the HR department. I'm all dressed up. I got my tie and my suit on and I look good and got my resume together. And the P and I talked to the receptionist behind the desk and she said, uh, he's in a meeting. And I said, can I wait for him? And I waited two and a half hours for Bob to come out of the meeting. But Bob came out, I gave him the resume, and I said, listen, I talked to you yesterday on the phone about a possible position here. Uh, here's my resume, here's my uh, cover letter. And if you've got something, if this works out, that, that would be really great. And so I waited two and a half hours, got the little mini two minute re uh, interview, because that's what you want. You want that little two minute re uh, interview. I uh, got my interview, they called me the next day and they said, listen, we need a curriculum for our drivers to uh, secure wheelchairs and other mobility devices on the bus and work with people with disabilities. Can you do that? I said, absolutely. So I got a six week contract with the London Transit uh, Authority uh, doing this curriculum and I made $8,000 for six weeks work. So I, that was my first consulting work that I did and it kind of helps me with all of what I do today. So that's the other thing you want to do is if you're cold calling, uh, you want to talk to the people if they say, yes, uh, can I bring my resume down? Can I drop it off? Yes. You get dressed up, you take your resume down, your cover letter, and you hand it to the person that you talk to on the phone and you get your little two minute interview that makes all the difference in the world and moves you forward in terms of getting a job so that's the other thing you can do and this is how cold calling will work out and help you to get a job and for all of you who are graduating from CDL truck driver training this is how you get a job you talk to these people you bang on doors you give them your resume you get dressed up as best you can you know you get your you're shaved you get your hair done then you go in and you hand them your resume <coughs> and exactly what Vinny just said it shows you how much you want the job Okay, Jake, uh, I'm not sure the rules. Okay, Andrew, have you ever been to New York? Yes, Andrew, I drove truck in the 1990s into New York City. So yes, I have been in there. Uh, uh, it's not allowed, but it's worth it, especially if you want to become a truck driver. Uh, Sebastian, I heard a lot of drivers with CDL licenses in Brooklyn, New York, who have passed criminal records are losing their jobs. Rick, I don't know how true this is being. I learned about it through a neighbor. Um, what do you think about that with CDL licenses and your jobs because they were discovered to have committed felony crimes in the past in Brooklyn, New York. Now, Sebastian, I don't know for sure because obviously this is all hearsay and basically what I'm saying is just my opinion about it. Unfortunately, if they're dealing with customers or something else has transpired, it's, it's difficult to make statements about that without knowing the situation for sure. There is a possibility that they lied on their application and they didn't get a job. So all of that is a possibility. If they did lie, it is it is a crime to have a felony uh, in the United States of America and not reveal that on an application. You need to disclose that information. And if they didn't disclose that information and it was found out, uh, then unfortunately that's not going to work out for them. Okay. So now, uh, so I think I've got most of the questions answered. Now, the other story about getting a job, uh, when I moved to Australia in 2002, uh, I was trying to go back to university to do my graduate work, and I couldn't go there because at the time, I was considered an international student because I, yet, I didn't yet have permanent residency in Australia. So, <coughs> excuse me, as some of you may or may not know, when you go to university in another country, you're considered an international student and international students pay three times the fees of what domestic students pay. So I couldn't afford to go to university until I got my permanent residency in Australia. So I decided that I needed to go to work for a year. It was easiest for me to get a job as a driver. I didn't want to go back driving truck. At that point, I pretty much exhausted my ability to be able to drive truck and just be by myself. So I thought, you know, I'll go and drive coach. I'll go and drive for Greyhound because, you know, I haven't driven buses before. And I thought, well, you know, it might be kind of fun. And 
even though I'd been a truck driver, they weren't just going to hire me because I didn't have any experience. Uh, you know, I had minimal experience in customer service. But I went down and I applied for a job at the uh, Greyhound station. I talked to the people who I, and they showed me where to go, told me where to go, where, you know, who I needed to talk to. And I applied, went in for a job interview and uh, they took me out on a bus. <laughs> and the first bus wasn't too bad. But the second bus was a synchromesh transmission. I learned later that the re why I was having so much difficulty with the bus, shifting the bus, was because I wasn't pushing the clutch to the floor. And for those of you who are learning how to drive non-synchromesh transmissions, you got to push the clutch in this far. Well, pushing the clutch all the way to the firewall was, was new to me. <coughs> Excuse me. It's something in my throat tonight. So I had a great deal of difficulty with that. But they hired me. I got the job and they put me in with a trainer for two weeks, which was really great because one of the things I was a little concerned about, because it wasn't the newest fleet in the world and I knew that vehicles broke down. So uh, one of the things I was worried about was the bus breaking down. What do I do with all these passengers? So what I did was, uh, what I, well, I was with the trainer. They were showing me the ropes where I needed to pick up parcels and where, how, how I pass, deal with ticker, tickets and passengers and those types of things. And it was all really great. But the bus did break down during training, which was the best thing that happened because I realized that as long as you were, uh, you know, honest with passengers and said, listen, the bus is broken down. Unfortunately, we're probably going to be delayed a couple of hours. Then everything was fine. Everything worked out. So, uh, you know, sometimes when we have some worries about something, you know, the company's going to look after you. They're going to train you to be able to do the work and those types of things. So if you have some you know, reservations about doing the work because you don't think that you're capable of doing it, you don't have the right training or those types of things, the company's going to help you out and they're going to look, they're going to look after you. They're going to make sure that you're the best employee possible. And that's what they want to do. So know that, you know, some of these companies are going to train you too. And if for those of you who are going to be uh, truck drivers, look for companies that have mentor programs, because that's really going to help you advance your career as quickly as possible. When you get somebody else who's helping you with navigation and route planning and somebody else who's helping you to show you the paperwork and those types of things. All right. Uh, Pedro, I'm interested in how the insurance policy works on cars. I'm currently attending college. <coughs> uh, and I still don't have my driver's permit, but I have driven cars before with my permits. Uh, Pedro, I'm not sure what you're looking for in terms of insurance, but you're going to have to be insured on a vehicle. You need to have a permit. You need to either drive your parents' car or whatnot. So I'm not exactly sure what you're asking me there. Uh, Ryan, I just passed my road test because of you. Thank you very much. Uh, Ryan, that's awesome news. Thank you so much. If you can head over to the Smart Drive Test uh, website and sign up for the 100K campaign, that would be really great and really help us out with that initiative that we have there as well. <coughs> Uh, slime cool. I have a felony me record. Do you know where I can get a different ID or something like that? Slime cool. Uh, you can't get a different ID. Uh, you just can't as far as I know. I mean, at least not that I know that you can legally. Uh, one of the things that you can do slime is you can get a pardon for your felony. If it happened some time ago, you can be pardoned for that. And you need to do a search on the internet to see how you can get that pardon. So you can move forward with employment and those types of things. All right, Jaden, uh, I got your email, but it's okay if you send, uh, put your emails in late. <laughs> Thanks, Jaden. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on. So the other thing that I sort of wanted to talk to all of the smart drivers about is that you probably noticed a bit of a change with the direction of the way the smart drive test is going. Uh, one of the things that I'm focusing on right now is I'm focus focusing on the business aspect of, of smart drive test. I'm really trying to s save uh, trying to, you know, turn this into a business and make this successful and, and sell my online courses. So uh, I hope that, you know, this is going to be successful because, you know, we all have to pay the rent. We all have to keep the lights on and I would like to do that and be able to bring you all kinds of great comments or great content rather that is going to, you know, help you to continue to pass road tests, help you to continue to be smart drivers and be safe on the roadways. So I'm going to be, you know, working to sell my courses a little bit more and, and really focusing on the business aspect of this. And I've actually hired a business coach to help me with all of those initiatives. So we're going to be working on that as well. 
Okay, so slime cool. It happened 30 years ago. So yes, I suspect. Now, uh, cool. Are you in the United States or are you in Canada? Just let me know that, and I'll give you a little bit more detail about that. All right. Uh, let's see. What other jobs have I had in my life? So yes, coming back to the aspect of selling yourself, and I know for many of us, you know, and I was I was guilty of this as well when I first started looking for jobs. Most of the time, all I would do was look in the you know in the classifieds, look online for jobs that are posted and those types of things. You really you don't want to try and do that. Uh, you you want to try and make phone calls. So let me tell you, the best jobs that I've got. The, the best work that I've had throughout my life has been through cold calling, has been through networking. It hasn't been with getting the, you know, the jobs that are listed in the, in the articles. And that consulting work that I got with London Transit has really moved my career forward. And that was through cold calling. It was the same thing with when I went to Australia. I got good jobs through cold calling, through talking to people uh, and networking. And that's where you're going to get your best initiatives. So. Uh, you need to sell yourself. You need to do a little bit of rehearsal uh, when you get on the phone. Uh, the other thing that I would suggest to you that I know that it's really nerve wracking when you're on the phone uh, and trying to talk to people that you don't know. But one of the things that I suggest to you is to stand up when you're talking to people on the phone. And as well, make sure that you smile. Pra practice your smile because it's going to move through the phone and one of, one of the books that right around the same time that I took that course on how to find a job and how to learn skills to to find jobs I read the book called Selling for Dummies by Tom Hopkins and it's an excellent book it talks about how you can sell yourself how you can make yourself stand out from the crowd how you can uh <coughs> Be prepared for the work that you want to do. You know, for example, dress for the position. If you want a job as a clown, you want to dress as a clown to go to the job interview. If you want to work as a medical doctor or you want to work as a bureaucrat in ICBC or something like that, or you want to work, work for the ministry or a bureaucrat, you need to dress up. You need to wear a tie. You need to wear a suit and those types of things. And I know sometimes we don't have the clothes and those types of things, uh, you know, but we all have... Salvation armies, we all have thrift shops, you know, go down, buy some nice clothes, get some nice shoes, look good for the position that you're going to be applying for. Okay, and Drive Smart BC, Tim is saying there that it takes a lot of time and effort, and yes it does, to get a pardon on a criminal record. It certainly does take a lot of time to do that. And Cool lives in Thunder Bay and is looking how to get a pardon, and yes, you're going to have to do that. There are some organizations, Cool, uh, if you can send me an email, I can probably look some of those up for you and get you started on that. But as Tim said there, it's it's going to take a bit of work uh, to do that. It doesn't just happen overnight. Okay, Tommy, uh, do you have a had a bus broke down any other time during the same job? <laughs> oh, Tommy, yes, I did a lot. Uh, not a lot, but enough. And uh, <coughs> oh, this thing in my throat just will not go away. Thing. All right, so. The company that I worked for in Australia had a mishmash fleet. Now, trucking companies, and they can sort of take a lesson from Schneider National in the States, they have the same trucks. Their fleet is, every truck is the same. And I cannot stress enough how much money, time, and energy is saved by a fleet having the same vehicles. You, you know, uh, instead of having to order a, a fuel pump for every tr every different truck, you have 20 fuel pumps on the on the rack for your freight liners that are all the same truck. And anyway, the company, this bus company that I worked had a mishmash of fleets. That every bus had a maximum seating capacity of 52 passengers. They had one bus in the fleet that had 54 passengers on it. So on a holiday weekend, I'm on the bus and we're doing the milk run to Sydney. Australia. So it went to Canberra, stayed overnight in Canberra, went to Sydney in the morning, came back to Canberra, and then went back to Melbourne. So I get the 54 passenger bus. Well, the 54 passenger bus has a transmission in it that is air over electric. So essentially what it was was an electric signal that went back to the transmission. There was a solenoid in the transmission that switched the gears, but they put air through the gear shifter so it felt like a real shifter. So anyway, I get going. It turns out that there's a short in the wire somewhere so it won't shift out of third gear once it gets warm. So I get into uh, uh, 
Anyway, it's the town on the state line. It'll come to me here in a minute where it was. And the bus breaks down. So we sit in the, we sit in this, we, it, fortunately it broke down in the fuel station. We're at the fuel station for a couple hours. Tried to get it fixed, sent out a mechanic, couldn't get it fixed. And so what had happened is the, is the bus cooled down enough that the two wires went back together. So we limped it into Canberra, got into Canberra, same thing happened. The thing breaks down. Uh, so finally I'm in there, I'm, I'm late about two hours. And what happens on a bus when the buses break down, there's two options. One, they send a mechanic out or they send another bus out. But the problem was is because this was the biggest bus they had in the fleet with 50 poor passengers, they couldn't send another bus out. They had to send two buses out because we, we had two passengers left over and me. <laughs> so we get into Canberra. Well, I just go to the hotel because I'm two hours late. I'm exhausted by this point. So anyway, they, they fix the bus. They take it into Sydney. So the next morning I get up, I get on another bus and I go into Sydney, Australia. Well, there's the bus. It hasn't been fueled, it hasn't been cleaned, but it's been it's cooled down and it's working. So I get on the bus, go down to the, the depot, and I pick up the passengers. I get on the bus, and I'm driving out of Sydney, Australia. And <laughs> I'm on the phone to dispatch. I'm trying to figure out where I need to get fuel for the bus because it's Sunday. Everything's locked. And so i got to stop to get fuel. And we're coming out of the terminal in Sydney, Australia, and I and I get on the microphone. I'm telling where we're going, what we're doing, when we're going to have a break, and those types of things. And I'm telling them we got to stop and get fuel. And I'm like, you need all those well-oiled machines, you know, that run on time, that precision machining, blah blah blah. <laughs> I said, well, you ain't on that bus. Sure enough, the bus broke down. Uh, Aubrey, yes, there we go. Thank you, Great Assault. Aubrey was where we were, where the bus broke down the first time. And we're coming back out of Sydney, and uh, so we stop, we get fuel, we get down the road a few miles, the bus breaks down again, I limp it, I come, turn around, come back, and uh, stop at the station on the other side. Well, anyway, uh, I get on the phone with dispatch again, dispatch says, well, it's going to be two hours before we get a mechanic out to you. And I, he's like, he, and then he says, well, we need you to fix the bus. Well, I, I just broke down in hysterics by this point, because the bus had broken down so many times. I just didn't know what to do. So anyway, I get back there and I'm messing around in the motor, doing whatever the mechanic's telling me on the phone. And finally, we got to go on and limped it back into Canberra. <laughs> I never saw the bus again. <laughs> so yes, I did have quite a number of breaks, uh, buses break down. So there we go. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, there you go. And yes, okay, Tim. So thanks for that clarification that it, it takes, yeah, it takes whoever wants to get... A criminal pardon it does take a lot of time okay uh, far less maintenance having the same vehicle yes Corey that is absolutely uh, Aubrey Jonathan I failed my road test on the first try I was upset but it's not the end of the world just reschedule and take it again and more practice on your weak points also watch do YouTube videos yes uh, <laughs> Hall Snoop I, I'm not sure why you got blocked there Corey's got something going on. So yes, so I had a number of times that buses broke down on me uh, while I was driving. I had some times that the trucks broke down on me as well. So uh, it does unfortunately happen when you're looking for, uh, when you're working as a commercial driver and those types of things. It's a little more daunting when you, when your bus breaks down when you have passengers on the vehicle. So uh, unless we have more questions there, I think we're gonna wrap it up early tonight. And uh, if you have any questions at all, you need any help with anything, uh, drop me a note, send me an email, and for those of you who are going for your road test, uh, make sure that you go down there and get your checklist there, head over to the website. Uh, bros, I got I go for my license on Tuesday with a fresh snowstorm. Uh, bros, uh, definitely have a look at the video, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. how to drive in the winter, and Corey will get that video up for you. Okay, Jonathan, just go slow when it's snowing. Yes. Um, Hall Snoop, you failed your test because your driving instructor was rude. Now, <coughs> Snoop, was it your driving instructor or the driving examiner that was rude to you? Good night, Vinny. Thanks for showing up, and we will talk to you soon. Oh, you've seen it. Okay, so you know what you're up against. All right, excellent. So just, you know, go slow. Make sure you got traction. And uh, don't get stuck in a snowbank because you definitely don't want to do that because examiners will not push you out of the snow. <laughs> All right, there we go. And uh, if you're new here, 
you're watching on the replay, hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment down in the comment section there as well. If you're new to Smart Drive Test, please consider subscribing. That would be really good. Uh, the guy you were doing your road test with. Okay, so how was the person rude to you, Snoop? What happened there? Because uh, I'm not saying that they're not. They do have their moments for sure. Uh, Pedro, rick at smartdrivetest.com and that'll get you an email to me, okay? Okay, Snoop, if you swear on the channel, you're going to be blocked. I'm going to tell you that right now, so that's why you're going to get blocked. Uh, okay, bros, have a great night. All right, and uh, congratulations to everybody who's passed a road test in the last week. If you have one coming up, good luck on that. And as well, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up, and all the best. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.